black mass, man, it's time to rock. I had to find a way, I couldn't find a job. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Black mass, man, it's time to rock. I had to find a way, I couldn't find a job. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. I woke up, then I logged in to that Urban X where they be flexing with that blog in. Put it down, cause my little homie called in. Had to bail him out, he in trouble with the law again. Black skin can't win in the white world. Seen a brother kill his own kid for that white girl. We ain't wanna go to school, but we had to. Every February it was scary in them classrooms. Shimmy y'all, shimmy gay. Old dirty bastards can't own dirty slaves or they own dirty masters. Black dot found the pot as a young and broke it down for his son and now he's serving to the masses. Black mass, man, it's time to rock. I had to find a way, I couldn't find a job. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Black mass, man, it's time to rock. I had to find a way, I couldn't find a job. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Urban excellence, a product of my residence. From four score to 44, Obama was the president. I told mama I ain't tryna go to church I'm like Adam, every Adam is a product of the dirt And I've been weeping what he showed I got the product, got the dirt And I can teach you what I know But then you got him put in work You in trouble if you waiting on the government I told my bro I make it out the hood And that's a covenant Peace Welcome back to another episode of the Urban X Podcast We are with you guys in the building Glad to be here, I'm Malcolm, this is the Black Dad Number one father and son podcast. On the planet. On the, in the universe. In the universe, right. In the multiverse too. In the multiverse. Everywhere you go. You know what I'm saying? We beating everybody. We just beating everybody. That's it. Thank you guys for joining us yet again for another full week of podcasts. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Yeah, that's, what, that's just our life. First of all, we want to apologize <laughs> about yesterday's webinar. Yes, that was all oh, Odyssey's fault. I'm going to... You know. Yeah, she was moving out of... When you're moving these kids out of these dorm rooms, man, and she made it seem like it was going to be an easy job. and it, Girls out of their dorm room. Yeah, girls out of their dorm room, and it just... It was a wrap, so yeah. we apologize. We'll have a double webinar. Yes, on next Wednesday. Yeah, we'll go from 11 to 20, so all... Numbers 11 to 20. Numbers 11 to 20. Yes. In terms of the, uh, you know, the checklist, yes, the checklist. So we apologize about that. These things happen. We got a new Eli and Freddie and Dad show us. It should be up. Is it up? Oh, it's not up. Well, you know, <laughs> it'll be up soon. <laughs> she said that was real honesty. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh uh, man, let's do a quick roll call. I see, uh, got uh, Bahamas, ATL in the building, Tampa, Nebraska, Chicago, Belo. Uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. LA is tapped in. Norfolk, Virginia. Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Hartford in the building. Mount Vernon is in the building. The Vern, okay. Vern. West Virginia, DR, Dominican Republic, okay. I like it. Texas is in the building. Cincinnati's in the house. Shot Town. Boogie Down. Charlotte. Always. BX, throw your X's up. Always. Left over right. Decatur, Georgia in the building. Harlem on the world, Harlem on the rise. Thank you, thank you, Harlem world. Yeah, I want to shout out my cousin Wateria, aka Terry. It's her birthday. Happy birthday. Yep. She's probably at what's today? Thursday. Yeah, she out probably getting it in early. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, you, know, you gotta do the weekend. You gotta. Do you the know whole, what it is. Gotta do the whole thing. So shout out, Cuzzo. I hope you're having a good one. So um. <clears throat> Let's get, how was your week, first of all, before we get to it? Uh, the week was okay, but I noticed today um, you've been very short with me. You look like you, for the first time, you really wanted to hit me. So <laughs> I need to know what that what, what was that all about? Because, like, real short, like, damn. And I'm like, come on, son. Like, this was one of the times I really thought, you know, and like, what age did you start beating your parents? He's, like, he's being dramatic because it's not. It, it, it was real bad. I no. kind of got a real. Because uh, you know when your a parent real vibe. I'm like, you know, you know when your parent knows your buttons and is trying to specifically push your buttons. So he would ask me something. I don't know. Why don't you know? I I don't. I this first time hearing about it. Why is this your first time hearing about it? Why Just don't saying. you? That's annoying. You I know could, that's annoying. I could have swore you you you, no, I did. you, you raised up. <laughs> no, you know, I did. And I'm just saying, when that happens, and I'm on the show, 
and I I blink three times. <laughs> and that means I'm in danger, man. Y'all need to call, you know, I don't know, can't call child services, call adult <laughs> services or something. Three times, like, you know, if I do that, that that there's it's a problem. So mm. anywho. So <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him. You got people in the chat. No, no, I'm, telling you, I'm, I'm just telling you how I felt. Man. You know how your spirit tell you, like he wanted to put his hands on me. He just wanted to put his paws on me just once. Don't listen to him. You know, and I, you know. I mean, but other than that, weekend was good. Uh, we're triple dating next week. Next week, yes. Not this week. Next week, next we're, week yes. We're triple dating for yes. the first time. Yes. Well, us, me, you, Marcus, yeah, right. and our wives. Right, right. That's gonna be cool. And we're gonna see Godfrey. Yes. That's gonna be yeah. My wife is like ah. Yeah, it's gonna be a little weird for you. Exactly. Yeah, we'll jump them though. We're gonna be there. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We're I got there. my we'll two sons with him, yeah, we'll him with me, and I'm gonna talk shit that day to him. Like your son, <laughs> care about none of that, you know, yeah. shit you working out we, shit. We will go see him. Yeah. We will see him. Storm the stage. You know what I mean, so but uh, yeah, we'll triple date. We'll have some drinks and we'll have a good time. Yes, I got a sitter. It's yes, all good. we're all good. It's all good. All right. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. So real quick, before we even start the show, I want to say a uh, happy solo return to Malcolm X. El Malcolm Hodge, X. El Haj Malik. Malik El Shabazz. El Shabazz. He would have been 95 or 96 today. Uh, you know, that's, you know, you know what it is, yes. man. And we need to always recognize that always, time, that day, uh, for what he has stood for and continued to stand for. I uh, I'm thankful for Elijah Muhammad mm -hmm. and everyone you know who paved the way to allow this black shining prince to come through and the platforms created to you know give him the platform to speak and grow and share that message around the world, which is still relevant till this day. Yes, ain't that something? Yeah, it is. You know, you can listen to Malcolm X and go, damn, we we dealing yeah. with that today. Yeah, and now it's even more relevant because. He was going back. He was going in on both parties, but like Democrats specifically, he was talking about liberals and how they're just super, super dangerous because of how they kind of positioned in the black community. Yes. And now that is more relevant than anything than else ever today. before. Oh my God. So his foresight to see these type of things uh, was amazing. And um, again, he, he stood for so much mm -hmm. and represented so much. And, you know, we want to recognize. All right. You know, yes, yes, yes. So let's get started. So uh, big news, not real big news, but just kind of drama-filled week a little because uh, Nick Saban was on a coaching panel and he has something slick to say about uh, the NIL, the name, likeness, and name, image, and likeness uh, thing that the NCAA has going on. And uh, he has something to say about, like, you know, Texas A&M being able to buy their players and stuff like that. Because Texas a &M had the number one recruiting class this mm, year coming mm. out, like a bunch of five star, four star players, and he said something slick about them, and then he threw uh, Jackson State under the bus. Isn't that something? Threw them under the bus. Said, you know, they paid the guy a million dollars and bragged about it. You know what I mean? Like threw them under the bus. And uh, Deion Sanders, Coach Prom, he responded. He was just like, "Yo, I don't even get paid a million dollars." Right. Like so, like what are you talking about? Right. Right. And, Neither here nor there. What if he was? What if they did? It's legal now. They right. can't do that. And not that it's just legal now, but teams like Alabama, these big power five schools, Alabama, Texas, all yeah. these, these, these like legendary schools have been doing that for years. years. They have a built-in recruiting system. Yeah, like, First of all, you want to be on TV, right? And they have this built-in recruiting system in which they've been doing it for years with these boosters who come through and they find ways to funnel money. Mm -hmm. And you know, and now that it's legal, uh, Texas, that it's a lot of money out in Texas. Oh, yes. A yeah. lot of big boy oil uh, oh, uh, tycoons yeah. and all that out in Texas. Oh, yeah. So they was able to get the number one recruiting class, and but they didn't break any laws. Now, because all they did is make it legal. Mm -hmm. So even if the, the black uh, uh, number one recruit who went to Jackson State was paid a million dollars, so what? Mm -hmm. Nick Saban just did a commercial with Deion Sanders. You thought they was cool. And it goes to show you how Nick Saban views. See, these are. He these, makes $11.5 million a year. He right? makes $11.5 million a year as a coach. Yeah. And he views these players as niggas. 
I don't care what nobody tell you, they're slave property, mm. and I need the fastest, strongest niggas so I can win every year. Now, another plantation has come along because there was always uh, 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 competitive plantations mm -hmm. on my plant, my slaves, mm -hmm. but, and they would bring them together and fight sometime. Mm -hmm. I got a big nigga over here who can beat you. And they would get them drunk and they would fight. This is very similar. When you're playing in these arenas, right? Mm -hmm. We understand this is all a distraction for food. You give them food, entertainment, and, you know, the circus, and they'll, you know, mm -hmm. it's a great distraction. So now other people are getting some leverage up on him. Yes. And he doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. Now he's probably got to work for his goddamn money. Yeah, okay. As opposed to having a built-in number one class where even the third string guys can play first string somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said. He, um, and if you look at Alabama's schedule, the first six games be trash games. Right. And then they start to pick up and stuff like that. And if you have, like, the, you, like you said, like the... Four fifth string players can just go anywhere they want. Anywhere they want. Because you have it built, like you said, on TV, a great NFL, chance to get to the NFL and things like that, great facilities. Now other schools are starting to catch up. Yep. And that's an issue. And then with Nick Saban, because I think to this point, right, he probably was doing the recruiting stuff like that, and Alabama's. A recruiting system, like they money funneling system, is probably so sophisticated. Yes, he probably literally does not have to know anything. He doesn't have to because it's plausible deniability. Yes. He don't know nothing. Somebody put together like a, a, a like a bunch of pictures of Alabama players with these fancy cars, uh, Audi, Audi, you know, uh, Chargers, Hellcat. Like they were all, and he would just and somebody would just like so the uh, uh, Nick Saban Motors, you know. Absolutely. Like, where are they getting this money from? Because most of these kids are poor. Now, the question I posed to you was, is the NIL uh, good or bad? And you said it was still, because I was saying, once the players get some money, yeah. do they let down? Do they let their foot off the gas now? Or do they play harder? No, or no, no. is it an incentive-based thing? I actually don't know. I actually don't know, because there are... Remember, prior to the NIL, there were coaches complaining about... Uh, Social media and how it's just affecting players and how it's affecting their ability to coach, how it's affecting of just that. So now they actually make money off their likeness. So now my personality has to shine out, but, but so I can kind of make this money, so I can kind of connect yes. with these fans and stuff like that as a collegiate player. And there's thousands of collegiate players now, so it could be worse, right? right? That all right. I, that all just kind of depends on the player. Now NFL teams have a better, clearer snapshot to know. This kid, if he gets some money, he's not going to play well because he did it here. Got you. Got you. Got you know you. what I'm saying? It's, it's easy to play it's, hungry. His stomach, right. His stomach not easy full. to play hungry, but it's easy to see. Okay, but as soon as you get some money, what is that going to look like? Like, if Jamarcus Russell was able to really make bread when he was in college, he might have he never might, went he, pro. He probably would have never been pro. And then you got to think about it like this. Not a, just the money, but the attention. Yeah. Listen, attention is a drug. Yeah. And a lot of these kids... Because social media can hype you up, make you think you're better than you are. Yeah. You don't have to work as hard. So why well, I already got a brand deal, this and that. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because attention will do that. How does all of this factor into just getting on your grind and playing the game? It's, it, it's, it, it is a double-edged sword, kind of. like Because I do believe players should get paid. These players be hungry, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you don't get no... like. People, they, you get like three meals, a day. like you only allowed to get like three meals. You that's can't what work. You teach a pr that's what you would give a prisoner. Yeah, you can't work. You can't have a job. You, you can't work. You can't have a job. We feed you. We we usher you to the field. Mind you, the so coach you're not is making, picking cotton. Coach is making millions. Right, but you want a hot summer field, right? And I'm going to segue into the next story around you. If you in Nebraska, yeah. Or some, it's nothing but white lily girls. And those are the slave master's daughters. And they're there watching mm. you as a slave on the field. And even they recognize how strong you mm -hmm. are and how big you are and <laughs> how robust you are. I don't like how sensual, <laughs> sensual you saying this. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And sweat dripping off that black nigga's face. And he looked like he can pick me and a tree up. Boy, imagine what would happen if he was inside of me. 
And as a result of this, you go to these schools that are predominantly white. Yeah, yeah. Right? No other reason you would go there in Nebraska but to play football is 97% white girls with big asses. Uh, Woody's, right? Uh, your, your loins, I'm just trying to paint the picture for you. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Your loins are bursting. You're in college. Mm hmm and your loins are bursting. I don't want to hear you. Say and you look it. out your room, <laughs> and they are there by the thousand. Just Sally and Annie Mae and <laughs> Julie and this snow bunny and that snow bunny <laughs> and Jill and God damn it, what is a black Malcolm X nigga to do? <laughs> Grab one of these little holes, <clears throat> lay it into her. You know what I mean? And then y'all start a relationship because she got good credit. Her family come from a little bit of money mm -hmm. and she can pay all your bills. Mm -hmm. You can put some shit in her mm -hmm. name. She know how to get the weed, mm -hmm. do your laundry for you and shit. She can even let you top of, you know, a friend will top you mm -hmm. off. They into that kind of shit. Oh, and then after four years of college, you in the green room and it's your big moment. You sitting there with your poor black family and in come Jill. And her family, and this is their big payday. Uh -huh. And they're sitting there, and the number one pick, Jill. You see what I'm saying? And you stand up there, and you kiss your family first. It's only like, <laughs> hey, ma, I and, wouldn't be able to. Grandma's without you. looking mad at grandma's you. Grandma's like, what the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah. If I'd have known I was coming to this goddamn silly white. No, get the hell off me, yeah. goddamn. <laughs> I, I'm going to stay home. I know you're going to be this Jill girl with you. And she's there. The white girl, she's very happy. And then you kiss your family first. You, you don't know who your father is because you never met him. Mm -hmm. And then you kiss, blah, 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 and they put that hat on. Then you turn, and there she is, the lily white love of your life. And you kiss her, and you walk on stage. And, and, and the rest <coughs> is history. And her family's at home. because They don't want to bombard you in the green room. They're at home like, yeah, we did it. She's with a nigger, but this nigger is worth 40 million. That's a different kind of nigger than a nigger like Rollo or, you know what I'm saying, man, man, you know, in the hood. He, he ain't never got shit together. Put the good, put the good silver away. Man, man is coming. Man, man. You know, and his, you yeah. know, he's got a bad upbringing. Mommy, treat him nice. We think everyone should have a second chance at life. He just did five years. Put the good silver away. Bring out the plastic, you know. Let's make him feel at home. You got right? issues. Man. No, I'm just saying. Right? So that leads me into the Bronny story. As LeBron, you know, people were eating up his son. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, his prom, he, I guess he went to his prom. Was it his senior prom? He's a senior in high school? Yeah, I think he's a senior. Yeah. yeah. That happened fast. So his senior prom. No, he can't be a senior because what college is he going to? Oh, I don't know. I don't, so, know. I don't think he, is he he's at a prom. Nigga, that's a prom. Okay, senior. that's a prom. No, he's at a prom. I don't know if it's his senior. Maybe it's prom. her prom. Irrelevant. Might right. be her prom. Right, you're right. So he's at a prom. And people were upset. And people were very upset with this. Listen, all I'm going to say is I don't know what the demographics is at that private school. It obviously is a very wealthy private school yes. because a lot of celebrities' kids go there. Yes, rich. rich. A lot of rich kids go there. And I, 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 didn't, you know, I didn't have to go through anything like that. But I have cousins who went to like a real, real public school and they were girls and they couldn't get a prom date. Because yeah, yeah, they just couldn't. Right, right. Because like the, the demographics there were just different, and I I know how hard it, like I, from from listening to their stories, I know how hard mm -hmm. it is. So I don't fault him too much. He could have brought home a white dude <laughs> at the prom. <laughs> That's true too. Mm -hmm. I don't fault him. You know, just kind of like you know. But let me show you a picture of his little sister. This mother took the picture, and I know this may not have been. What she was saying, but a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. And this little girl's face, to me, was priceless. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the mom, I feel like Savannah knew what she was doing by posting it. Yeah, she's like, what the fuck yeah. is this? <laughs> yeah. That don't look like my mama? Because usually, you know, the guy, he will date his mother. Yeah. Not lit in the literal sense, but somebody, the image and likeness of his mom's. And this little girl who's just innocent, mm -hmm. this is an innocent look. She looking back like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. You know what I mean? So the little ones and grandma probably had to have the same expression. Yeah. And uh, so I just thought that this was uh, unique in the sense 
that, you know, like I said, a picture is worth a thousand words. And, um, you know, so just interesting stuff. I'm not going to hang them. Again, we talk about, you know, uh, demographics and, and, and proximity. And two, it's not like he wasn't uh, giving a great example of black love at home. Yeah, right. Yeah. Man, I don't know what happens in the home, but optically speaking. Mega Bill said that's not a bad looking pink toe. <laughs> and optically speaking, like his, his dad is with his, his mom. Yeah. He's married. They have, you know, so it's not like you can say oh, LeBron ain't, you don't know what the demographics is at that school. Mm-hmm. And, but outside of that school, well, maybe again, th- these are the challenges you face when you not, you, you're supposed to live in better neighborhoods if you can afford it. I have nothing against that. If you want to, you know, cause that's where the better schools are, but you do lose a piece of your soul when you're not mm-hmm. synchronized with your people. You know what I mean? In, in the grand scheme of things. Now, I'm not saying he's supposed to live in the hood. That right. is not what I'm saying. At least it's some of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but but you, but you <laughs> know what I mean? House. So, so, so this may have something to do with that, or maybe LeBron is raising his children to see the world as everyone is equal and fair, and we should not get all upset about this because what he eat don't make us. That, that's uh, so that'd we, be my we're, thing. We're making fun of it now. Yeah, that'd be my just thing. Making light of it. But he has to walk that walk, not you, yeah. not me. I don't have to walk that walk. So a lot of times we make a lot of uh, 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 what other people are doing with their lives, and it has no bearing on your existence whatsoever, whatsoever who yeah. he dates. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just a reflection on himself. Yeah. And if this is who he chooses, because his, his father's surrounded by white people. Mm-hmm. Now, he married his high school sweetheart and all that. But all his business, he, he, the world that he lives in. Did you see LeBron's junior prom picture? No. He's with a white girl, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I got to change my whole narrative. <laughs> this whole family is fucked up. Nah, LeBron yeah. needs to do a better job with his kids. I don't know who no. dug that picture up, but it was just like, oh, snap. But Who, LeBron himself? Yeah, it was LeBron himself. Wow. I think it was his junior prom, because I, I think him and Savannah went to prom together. Like this. Oh, his junior prom. Yeah. Okay, you got to knock a few of these white girls down early. Oh, you got to knock them down early. Man. Fellas, knock them down. Get it out of your system. You heard Kendra Kamar. <laughs> Kendra Kamar is up and said, I knocked a few of them down. <laughs> you heard of Kendrick, yeah. You got to knock a few of them down just to kind of get the slave, you know, hey, revenge. Somebody said proximity is not a good argument. I, listen. No, if you in Nebraska, I'm a, you a goddamn lie. And I'm sorry to say it like that. If you go to school in Nebraska and it's 98% white women and you don't see no sisters and your loins is, because you're not even thinking about it as anything other than you dropping a load. Let's just keep it a bean. Yeah, and too, like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make an argument. I'm just yeah, saying, yeah, like, no, I no. can see how that happens. I could, that's all the point I'm trying yeah, to make. I'm not I even can trying to... see how it happens. If I grew up in a neighborhood with nothing but Japanese, you know I like Chinese midgets. You know that already. Oh, okay. If I grew up in a neighborhood <laughs> with bunch Chinese midgets, it's going down. And I, I'm going to take pictures and everything. Y'all just going to be mad. No, but you know what I'm trying to yeah. say. So that does play a role. Just like if you hang out with t- nine broke guys, you're going to be number 10. Don't tell me that. That doesn't affect your behavior. If you hang around with 10 dudes who are entrepreneurs and got their shit together, you probably learned something. So if you're hanging around in the office with a whole bunch of white people or going to school with a whole bunch of white people, there is a greater opportunity that that could happen. So that's all I'm going to say. Not for you no more. goes down. Knock them down. I tell Odyssey that white men have warrants. No, serious. Jesus, man. But I tell Eli, knock them down. Knock them knock down. Thank you, Sawanda Thomas, for the cash app. I appreciate you. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, that's his choice. These pitches will last forever. I'm hoping as he gets uh, older, I just want him to find, you know, something close to what his mom's talking about, you know. Because that little picture with his sister's crazy. That is, it's a funny picture. She That's knew what she was doing. Yeah, she knew what she was doing. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. So, um, some tax information came out regarding the Black Lives Matter girl, the, the co-founder. Yeah. And apparently she paid her, it says, it, I don't know why it's, it, it specifically says she paid her baby's father 
like $900,000. I don't know. $970,000. For creative purposes. For creative, yeah, creative purposes. She paid her brother's security company like $800,000. Yes. She paid somebody else like $2.1 million. Now, again, I always believed that they were doing something funny with that money. However, I don't know why they are throwing her under the bus. It seems like a lot is coming out about her. Remember, she lied about the $6 million house. Yes, yes. Uh, they caught her in that lie. She, like, it's just a lot coming out about her specifically. Now, again, I don't care. I just want to know why. Well, I'm going to say, first of all, somebody's got to take the fall. That's Somebody has like. to take the public fall. That's what it seems like. Yeah. Right? Look over here at this black girl. See, niggas, they can't even control a little bit of money. Now, it's a very small amount of money. It is. And that's why, no, that's why it looks like a, a large. Now, had she had $100 million mm-hmm. and she gave her baby daddy 900 that would go under the radar so smoothly. Yeah. But because she probably only had mm-hmm. $8 million or $10 million, when you give your 10% of that, to your baby's daddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how, that's how they worded it. You know, maybe they're not married. That's what I, like, I, I was kind of like. Why not just say, you know, anyway. And then, and then, and then, there was a part of me. I'm not going to lie. So, okay, if they're not together, that's just, it's kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, no, what you doing, man? I know you're struggling. Man. It's kind of cool. You, know I mean? you can't even pay child support for the kid we got. Um, how about I pay you child support? And you kick it was me a back. Part of, it was a part of me that said now, that. Now, watch this. I kick you 970. You kick me back 200. That is, yeah. That's how that money get ping pong. Yeah. And so on record, yeah. you got 970 for creative purposes. Yeah, you did. You, yeah, you worked. Uh, we hired you as a, a, a creative con- consultant. As a contractor. As you a know, contractor, in, independent contractor. But yeah. you kicked me back. Because that's how all them people was getting uh, caught up in them PPP loans. That's right. Dudes right, right, was right, 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 right. filling out the loan for you and saying, kick me back five grand, kick me back 10 grand. And then when the IRS came to you, it was like pointing to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know. And then your your brother, 800000 for security. She uh, charged off a charter flight, for, which was a private jet. For, you know. So I think they pointing at her. But this goes on all the time when we start talking about um, filtering and, and, and funneling money. And it's easy to say what you would have done until you got mm-hmm. $5 million or $10 million sitting in your lap. That is supposed to be for the very causes that you fight for. Yeah. And you go, eh, fuck that. You know what I mean? I got to find ways to keep me money because that's the way everybody else do it. So they went about it wrong and she's going to be the fall guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's just my humble opinion on how that's going to work. She's going to have to take uh, the blame for that. And, uh, and it's probably nothing. They, can, they can't recoup the money from him. Yeah. Because that was, uh, I paid him for a service. Yeah, that's, that's probably on his 1099. That's probably on his 1099. <laughs> yeah, 1099. Yeah, 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 you know. There was a couple, there's a couple that was going through divorce recently, and they had to uh, sell their art collection. Their art collection was worth $922 million. Now, that's crazy. Right? And we're talking about charities and how that you wash money or you put money from one pocket to the other. Art is another way to do that. Oh, because it's subjective in terms of its value. And the people who are telling you what that value is, these curators, they're, they're the ones who kind of make that. And so it becomes tax write-offs. Right. So, that's, so much listen, sheltered. Art, charities, and real estate is how, and government contracts. Yes. Sorry, that's why I was, yeah, and government contracts, right, is how uh, the elite... Uh, uh, launder their money is how they shield themselves from taxes. Yes, yes. That's how they just keep their family rich forever because, you know, you can, uh, uh, money that was supposed to be taxed, you can invest that in art and then. Yes. And then as long as you don't sell the art, mm-hmm. you never have to pay the taxes on it. You can, like, tell your daughter in law, your little uh, granddaughter, to draw something and say, I, I bought this for $100 million. Yeah, and you can and defer. Then do- and donate that money to a charity that you own somehow. Yes, and they. It's, the game is crazy. And war. Add war to that list. Oh, that's why government contracts. Oh, yeah, government contracts. Government yeah. contracts. Like, you know, uh, uh, gun manufacturers, things like that, car manufacturers. Because once you get those type of contracts, you're straight. You, you're watching the, the Senate just overwhelmingly pass a $40 billion uh, bill to Ukraine. Why yes. is it overwhelmingly passing $40 billion to Ukraine unless y'all all got money somewhere? Yeah, somebody's going to get some money in the back end of that. You get what I'm saying? So y'all should um, look into that. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, the art, once the curator, 
who's in on it. Mm hmm. Over and which values. They is, which they are. Yeah, of course. They have to be. Yo, there's people like like artists, right? A lot of artists, a lot of authors and stuff like that, their art increases when something like crazy happens. Like Basquiat, his art value increased after he died, right? I think the author for Catching the Rye, I think he died before his book actually was published. Mm. And then it, it just makes it a better story surrounding yeah. these pieces, right? These, you know, these pieces. So now as a curator, you have the power to go, no, but that's valuable. Like that right. black line on this and, white and, paper is right. super valuable. You know what I mean? I don't I don't know how it works. And before we go to break, the famous art from the from the uh sitcom Good Times. Oh yes, yes, yes. Right? Just sold for fifteen million dollars. They had it valued at a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. And all of a sudden, it just kept, it was at the, uh, what's that famous, uh, Sotheby's. Oh. And it just kept going up and up and up. And it was a black guy uh, who, I believe, purchased it along with the song. I think that Marvin Gaye wrote the song, Good Times. Oh, wow. To it or something to that effect. Don't quote that part. But I know Marvin's gay name was tied up into this. So this painting right here from the, from the sitcom Good Times uh, went for $15 million. That's dope. So again, just showing you uh, the value of something, uh, of a piece of history. Mm. Good Times was very important to us. Mm -hmm. Now, in retrospect, we can look at it and poke all the holes into the story of how they got rid of the father and blah, blah, blah. But growing up, temporary layoffs, those good times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so forth and so on. And um, as a result of that... So I said it's Marvin's album cover. Oh, okay, it's his album cover. Okay. okay. I knew it was something uh, to that effect. Nice. And uh, so it becomes... that. I guess that's a double value. Mm -hmm. You can tie Marvin's name to it and good times to it. So uh, someone paid $15 million for that. Sheesh. Yeah. 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 All right. So uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then uh, we shall return. Yes, we shall return. Sending Infinite Goddess, and I am happy to announce that I am back and in full effect, ready to work with you on your spiritual journey. Whether you're looking to balance your chakras with an infusion of Reiki energy, or you're looking to connect with your spirit team with an angel oracle reading and get some clarification or confirmation on your love life or your career, finances, or just life in general, or perhaps you're looking for a non judgmental safe space to receive some mental ease, I am here to help you. 
So be sure to visit my website, www.ascendinginfinitegoddess.com. See all the services that I provide. Get to know me a little bit better. And also, feel free to visit my YouTube channel, Ascending Infinite Goddess, and see hundreds of videos that I have available for free to help you on your spiritual journey. Until we connect again, stay alert, stay aware, and live in love. Peace. Back. In the flesh. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to... Uh, support our advertisers. The information is in the description below. Yes, quick announcement. Um, tomorrow is the last day of the early bird special for the Phil Valentine lecture webinar that will be taking place. Um, the description, the link is in the description below. After tomorrow, the 20th, it goes up to full price. So if you was thinking about it and you're on the fence, uh, you know, get in between... And a lot of y'all won't see this until tomorrow, so <laughs> pause the tape <laughs> yeah. and go ahead and get linked up so that you could, uh, you know, be in, involved with that. So uh, real quick, we ha we got this gift from um, the Sacred Tree. Um, if you guys remember, they advertised with us a while ago. Yes, back, yes. And they're about to come back. So they're they, family. Yes, they're family. So this is uh, her new I Am Queen spiritual bath and spa treatment. So she got us this gift. Right, hold on. Right, uh, I am queen. This is a candle. It smells Wicks good. Candle. Wicks candle. Smells good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. What else we got? Hold on. Hold on. Show that for the camera. Did you show that? Already? My bad. My bad. All right. All right. I am queen. So what else? This is uh, body butter. Twenty-four karat gold body butter. Twenty-four karat gold gold. Body butter. And this is, I think it's a bath bomb. Yes. That's a bath bomb. Spiritual bath bomb. Shouts out. So we appreciate you. Thank you for the gift. And what's the website? Uh, the Sacred Tree. Dot life. 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 Dot life. Yes. Now, Malcolm, I like to say, back when I was Bronnie's age, and every now and then a guy want to take me to the prom. And you know, buy me a nice little uh, okay. You're a little listening thing to the here, All right? Of Urban X. I take him home and give him loving relations. Sometimes I have loving relations oh with my myself. God. So you can go ahead and get this body bomb <laughs> butter. By I am queen dot tree. I think that's what it is. That life. I am queen dot life. Oh and get you a bomb, a butter bath. Every now and then your skin get a little... We're little, moving on. A little wrinkly. You got to get you a... Shut the fuck up. Boy. We're moving on. We're moving on. Get you a butter bath. Damn, yeah. man. See, this, this is... You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. My bad. See? You ready to hit your father? <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Let me do my job. You do your job. Let me do my job. You do your job. See, see, that's why we have intentions up here. Nah, you know what? You this know, show is over. I think, you, I, see, you I, know? think, I think that's my least favorite impression because it's it's slow, and I hate when people talk slow. But that's your personal. No, 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 no. All people no, don't no, no, talk no. fast. No, no. I think that's the. I, I think that's you know everywhere else. We got to think about. I'm sitting there with you. I got you, but that one is just it's slow, and it's just like. But we got to think about. And then what I, we're you, saying. you're coming up with the jokes as you're talking, so but, and, and I know that. Yeah, uh, that that's true. I I don't plan none of this because old people can't plan. See? That's the way it goes. But you better not hit me because that. I know you I need want, to wrap it up, but somebody, I need to wrap it up, but walk over, you're gonna limp back. You can walk over. Come on, clear this. Oh my God, Come bro. on, clear this. Come Jesus, on, clear man. this. You walk over. <laughs> you're gonna limp back. You walk over, you're gonna limp back. Okay, that was a good one. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> All right. All right. That was I, a good I, one. I got that off. I'm yeah, good. I'm you good. got that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> That was a good one. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, man. So, uh, The Rock, right? The Rock. And XFL, they signed a multi-year deal with Disney so they can have all 43 of the XFL games next year in 2023 on uh, ESPN, ABC, and FX. Whoa, that's big. Yeah. That's big. 
That's big. So yeah. now they with Disney? Yeah. Who else? ESPN. Which ESPN, which own Disney. All right. Uh, ABC. Oh, man, they're good to go. And FX, yeah. So now he's about to be a billionaire. I, I'm, I, I said it. In last, he's positioned when himself. He, when he announced that the XFL got a deal with the NFL, they had like a supplementary like agreement with them. And that's when I knew that they, like, I was like, he's probably going to hit a billion. Yeah, really, yeah, he's definitely going to Now there's an incentive to, for players to go there. Now, they have everything in place. All they need to do is just produce a good product on the field. And so far, so good. I mean, it isn't... Uh, Top shelf football. Yeah, right. But it's almost there. Right? No, yeah, and, and like they had, I told you, like they had showcases for players at these top schools. Yes, one at Jackson State. That so they they're had. bridging it. They're yeah. bridging it. I, I like it. And I do. It's a lot of ground to cover because from the end of the NFL season to the start is seven months. So like, there's a lot of people who want to who want to watch them football. Yeah, yeah. I think my bold claim. I don't know how long it's going to take. I think the XFL is going to wind up absorbing. The USFL into one, into one. You might as well add more teams. Yep, it can't beat add them. Resources. Join them. Yes. yes. Um, XFL has NFL talent level head coach Wade Phillips was a coach. From yes, one of the teams. now that's that's a fact. So that is a fact. He somebody said he's cooking. Yeah, bro. Like I like that dude is a monster. I don't know how he does it, but mm-hmm. he's a monster. And what's fly about him is the chairwoman of the XFL, also one of the owners, his ex-wife. Oh. And him and his ex-wife do business. They like that is his business partner. That is his business. Isn't that something? Yeah, they were divorced already, and he said that his acting career had stalled. And she said, "Yeah, I'm gonna handle this for you." Wow. And the reason why he became the number one grossing is because of is her. Because of her, basically. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. And for them to still be friends, so like and do business. Yeah. So how do you think the the draft and the stuff will will go? Because all right. If you are a good player now, if you are, you, you kill in the XFL, you want to go to the NFL. Yes. Right. So how does that work? Like, are y'all always just kind of? I, I think there's always talent out there. Yeah. So you renew your talent based, and then you get some guys who won't even go to college no more, or you know what I mean? Go. You know what? I'd rather go to the XFL and hone my skills. Well, Ooh. no, they probably have recommended you got to. Be a certain age, so yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. want to not go to college and then spend three years in the hood. No, because you because you know I like the people who got the NFL draft was a couple weeks ago. Right, the people who didn't get drafted, they they try to make the team at camp and stuff like right. that. So what what like like a practice squad? Yeah, or practice squad players. Sometimes the offer will be better to just go to XFL yeah. and play, right, and be seen right. as opposed to being on the practice squad. So I believe it's going to it's sort of like the summer league. Yeah. In the NBA. Yeah. The summer league is exciting because yeah. you're watching the up and coming talent come in and now you got the G League. Yeah. And the G League, usually each team might have a G League and they run the same plays. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. And so what that does is when you get up and they call you up, yeah. we don't have to re uh, educate you. You already know the system that we're running. So it's one string now. It's yeah. usually on a string. And I do think that that's a great idea for those who play football. You know what I'm saying? I'm into the pro game, and I like the college game, too. But you know what's crazy? Because remember, like I said, like I, I explained, like the end of, uh, the Alabama season, a lot of those top schools, one, they make their own schedule, right? So yes. they make the first five weeks. Yes, easy as possible. Very easy. So now, now what that's, not to cut you off, what that does for them under programs, yes. it brings a little light. So that's my way of giving back to your program. Alabama's going to come play. Uh, to Hootie University and destroy y'all and destroy we gonna kill y'all <laughs> but y'all gonna get a televised y'all. game yeah. it's gonna lead to a few extra dollars yeah. and then you as a recruiter go yeah, you know we play Alabama yeah. <laughs> we lost 70 to nothing but that's beside the point you gonna be on TV yeah cause all these other schools don't want you yeah <laughs> to Hootie University I said <laughs> no Tep College has now uh, you know the Chicago Onks. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's move on before I lose it tonight. All right, yeah, yeah. But that's a good thing. Yeah, it's, I, I just wonder how um, it's just going to work with the players. Because if I have a really, if I'm in the XFL, I'm the coach, I have a really good quarterback or something, he's going to want to go to the NFL. Yes. Or receiver or running. He's going to want to go there. So I don't know how that, like, do they have to stay there for, like, two-year contract or... There might be something, to, or uh, because I benefit, believe it or not. If I'm the XFL, sure, I lose a player, mm-hmm. but look at what we're producing. Yeah. So now I can turn to young people, yo, 
You've come here. You have an opportunity. That's true. You know what I mean? We done sent four players up or six players up who are now a part of the system. So, because I know my man, um, Jeff, he played semi-pro for years. Oh, yeah. He's just big. He loved the game of football. That might have he's a little older now. Yeah. But the other day, in his prime, yeah. that would have been an option for him to say, okay, I love the game so much, I can at least go to XFL and the competition and, and you never know. So yeah. That's funny. You are tuned into the Somebody sounds. said the onks would be a hard the name. Onks. The onks, baby. So um apparently it's rumored that the Migos group broke up. Now, I'm gonna tell you how this is rumored. And I'm gonna, like, I always, when I hear stories like this, I'm like, how does somebody have that much time? Apparently, somebody found out that Offset, Unfollow, Quavo, and Takeoff. I'm like, how the hell are you going through their followers to know? A lot of people do that, man. That is crazy. No, they, 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 it's people who got that kind of time to know who unfollowed who. Now, I can see if I got beef with somebody. Yeah. Or if I'm on a basketball team, like they said, Westbrook unfollowed the Lakers. Yeah. That must mean, all right, well, you know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for you to comb through to find out that I've unfollowed members of my group, that's a little, you know. Yeah. So, um, because uh, Quavo and Takeoff, uh, they're coming out with some with their own music, like duo, and they're going by Unk and Few because Takeoff is Quavo's nephew. I didn't know that. Yeah, and and Offset, I think, is Quavo's cousin. So like, it's it's a it's, it's, it's a triangle of yeah. uh, family blood. Somewhere. So um, I don't know, I don't know. This could be a PR stunt. Um, people people are already blaming uh, Cardi B. They call she is the Yoko Ono. Yoko Ono of the Black Beatles. That bitch broke the Beatles. Yeah. Up, man. I was crushed. <laughs> I liked the Beatles. Yeah. I was only like eight years old when I got into their music. But in graduation, I sang that song. Imagine all the people. You know really, I, mean? I learned I something new about you every day. Not yeah, lie. I learned that. I had to Not sing that song. I got a big old afro and shit, and my pants is bell bottom. This yeah. shit is real funny. And there I am singing. You know, imagine all the people. Long story short, yeah. but. I think, listen, he got two kids now. Cardi B made some very disparaging statements about the music industry lately. I don't Did know she? if you heard them. No. She said something about, uh, don't quote me, somebody in the chat know. It was something about this industry is starting to eat at her mm. or at her spirit or something mm. to that effect. You know, kids change you. I don't mm. know if he had kids before that. He has like eight, but go ahead. <laughs> well, maybe love. Maybe kids with love yeah. changes you because Cardi B doesn't seem real enthused about hitting the road again and becoming an artist. Yeah, yeah. She got a husband. She got her two children. Her album came out when? 2016? Yeah, she got a few dollars. 20, Is that know. not what every girl from the hood really want? A stable man mm. well, for whatever, you know, if he's going to be stable or not. Beautiful children and a beautiful home to mm. live in. That might be it for me. She might cash it in. Look at Rihanna. Rihanna ain't put out music in years. Yeah, 2017. You know I mean? Yeah, 20, you know, she's doing her makeup or, or design of this. And sometimes it's really about that. Beyonce got her children yeah, now. Yeah. I mean, you know, at some point you want to settle in and you put your work in on the road, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, you I know? think because somebody said she, Cardi don't want to be famous no more. I can see that. Bro. She like, took the oath too late. Yeah, yeah you, it's too if, late. If it you, is. I don't, I don't know what it is to be that famous to where everything you do is somebody's offended. She said her songs bring demons. Yes, that's what she said. Wow. Yep. Wow. She said that. Yep. She just did a song in the Bronx. Well, she did a video in the Bronx. Yeah. Uh, with the, the but you the, know the, what? The, the Bronx drill rap. But she has always had an unfiltered part about yes, her. Yes, very true. That she goes off script. That I always appreciate. Even yeah, during the true. vaccine yes. stuff. Yeah. She went off script. They went, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Bring that shit back in. Yeah. So a lot of times, even if she did take the oath, but she don't even know how to spell oath. <laughs> oath. A. O F O F O A F. I took the O F. Right? It's like loaf. Yeah, that's how oaf, I say it. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> I took the oaf. she probably don't even know what the fuck the O F is. Yeah. Let alone you can't once you in you can't come out. You know what I mean? Uh, Rihanna actually had Rihanna and ASAP had their baby. Yeah, it's clapped that baby up. Boy. Baby boy. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I actually found out because. Uh, I think like a week ago, somebody who was working at the hospital kind of leaked that information. Yeah, that's was, a, yeah, yeah, the hip loss. Yeah, somebody was just like, somebody tweeted like, yo, they clearing out the floor because Rihanna's having her baby. 
yo, she had a boy. Like, that was like last week. So, mm. I think the news officially came out today. So, got you. Got you. But yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's just one of those things. And um, so, she, um, you know, who, who knows what she's going through because. You get on the other side of that thing, bro. Yeah, bro. I, I, can, I can't imagine. Like, I can't imagine that. Like, if I say I, anything, it's a problem. Well, if I say anything, I offended these people. I got to apologize here. And I have... And you can't give up the secrets. Brand deals. And I know yeah, and I know something crazy. I know and the I, craziness. I see, I've been I in the parties. It. I know I know the inner workings of this thing yeah. now. And I can't say that. I'm a young girl from the Bronx yeah. who may have bit off more than I can chew for, for fame and fortune and a few pieces of silver. And now I'm in too deep. And what they do is they give you an example of what can happen to you. You know, you see what you, oh, you thought that was an accident? Let me show you. So, and then for her to come out recently and say that her songs are demons or this and that, go back to, uh, what's my man, J James Todd? or the, Not James Todd, that's LL Cool J. Uh, the guy Todd who, uh, who was talking about the satanic uh, rituals years ago. I had the cassette tape. He was breaking it. They take those albums and they infuse spirits and demons. That's what mastering the album is. They take it to a separate mm. location within these record labels. And once you do it to the master, remember, every copy you make, it's already embedded in it. I think mm. it was uh, uh, John Todd. Thank you. I love my goddamn Shout chat. Shout out to the chat, man. It's smarter than we are. Shout out to the chat, man. John Todd. Years ago, I got there, about 15 years ago, I listened to that audio, and he was matter of fact on it, mm. that the industry does this. So, because once you, and then remember, you have the, the reverse li linguistics, mm. where you can phonetically hear things in songs, and so, uh, you know, maybe she's on to something, and they, they'll shut her up real quick, they'll shut her up. Wow. You are tuned into the sounds. Of Urban X. So, uh, remember, we spoke about the, the stock market crashing, cryptos was crashing, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, apparently, Tesla got removed off the S&P 500 of Wall Street. And he started going on, like, a Twitter tirade and said that the Democrats used to be, you know, for, you know, um, uh, tolerance and these values, stuff like that. Now they're about division mm -hmm. and things. I'm going to be voting Republican from now on. Then he ended his tweet was like, watch the uh, character assassination happen now. And mm -hmm. that's literally what's been happening. Like, you just completely, like, proving him right. Um, a lot of people um, are upset about that. Tesla actually lost, I think he actually lost, like, $40 billion in his net worth. Sheesh. But remember, this all started to unfold after he said that he was trying to buy Twitter for $44 billion. So I think he's playing the game with the tweets and stuff like mm -hmm. that with Democrats. And I think he's playing the game mm. to kind of even uh, uh, get a bargain deal off of Twitter if he still wants it. Yes. But once he exposed... Remember he started talking about the bots. But and, once he exposed those bots... Right. That was a, a strategic chess move. Yeah. Because as many people that you think are actually... Uh, doing this, this is a system in place. There's probably so many bots on Twitter. Then we saw the expose. Remember, somebody was talking about Twitter. Oh yes. So Project is this, is this company called Project Veritas, right? Yes. They they are famous for getting hidden tapes and stuff like that. They, any date you go on, they probably watching you. Like they, yes. Uh, ew. They were into. I guess they had a hidden camera on some top Twitter execs. Like one. Uh, Software engineer at Twitter. He was like a top engineer at Twitter. He said something like, yeah, we basically communists. Like, we just completely censored the right. Mm -hmm. And they had his name and title and everything. Yes. So it wasn't like this person. They That's had receipts. His, yeah. They had everything. So we basically censored the right. We're like communists. We, we kind of control everything. Um, you know, we make sure like the, the Democrats have, you know, the platform they need. Republicans don't. And then there was another one. He was like an executive. He said something about like they hate Elon Musk. They don't want him to buy it. Mm -hmm. Some a lot of his coworkers said they're gonna leave as soon as he buys it and stuff like that. So this is this is getting interesting. This is getting very interesting. It's yeah. like he it's like he went in as a suicide bomber. Like yes, and he can afford to come can, out on the other side right. because of how much money and he's shielded and protected. 
Like if you just a lone gunman and you're going to expose Twitter, they would have been knocked you off mm -hmm. or discredited you mm -hmm. in such a way that nobody would believe you anyway. Yeah. But if you have $250 billion, you could go in as a suicide bomber, mm -hmm. ruffle things up, make them bring what's under the bottom to the surface, expose it if you have eyes to see yeah. and ears to hear. Yeah. And go, wait a minute. It's called Project and, Veritas. And then pull yourself out of it and leave the mess there, the carnage. Yeah. And that's what it seems yeah. like as a chess move is happening with Elon Musk. And I'm not an Elon Musk fan and yeah. none of that. And I'm simply watching the game as it's being played. Because and we use these wars, these corporate wars, they usually happen like away from the public. Like there's a legislation here, there's some funding here, lobby lobbying here, like there's money just kind of moves around to make sure that war is fought like covertly. What happens now with the Elon Musk thing? He'll say something, and then like a Democrat will say something, right? And like defend, like going against Elon, but it now it's, it goes against Jeff Bezos, who is a Democratic, big Democratic donor. Right. So right. now they talking about uh, taxing billionaires. He go, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down with that. So that, yo, there was an article in the Washington Post. It was an op-ed article and said that the uh, George Washington University needs to change its name. Mm. In the Washington. Post. Wow. You wow. see, like, yeah, all yeah. of this stuff is eating each other. Like, I, yes. You see, it, I, I, it's collapsing in on each I, other. Like, now y'all don't even know who y'all fighting now. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on that. Yes, for sure. For sure. Because it's getting interesting. You're listening to the sounds of Urban X. <sighs> Apparently, there was a first uh, U.S. case of monkeypox. Yeah, that's the new thing going on uh, in Massachusetts. Yes. I believe it was. So monkeypox monkey is, is now on the, not on the rise. No need to get alarmed. Just some guy who came from Canada. I think he flew in from Canada, and he has monkeypox. I didn't even know there was a such thing as monkeypox, but I do know <laughs> they're ramping back up this craziness. Oh, yeah, yeah. All around, uh... Be careful, and it's not going to work now because nobody is flinching now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right where two, three years ago, they had the world on edge. Especially around this time, 2020. Nobody is flinching anymore. they like, whatever. I don't see no mask anywhere. Me neither. You know what I'm saying? One or two spots you may see a mask. You're going to a hospital. And you know what's crazy? Like, the mask works so well for the psyche of this whole thing because I know people who just wear it just to feel... Just to feel. Right. They know it don't work. Right, right. They know it does not work, but just but it's to... Psycho, it's like a blanket. It's yeah. like a, a... What do you call them? Blankets? You Like a comfort blanket. Yeah. Something you keep with you because you know for a fact that that doesn't work. So, um, I did see the CDC is now recommending if you travel domestically, you should get tested and stuff like that. Listen... You had you had a you had a window of like six months. They had a window of like six months yeah. to, to to really get what they needed to get done. But I don't think people are going for it now. It's hot now too. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, outside with it. Right, right. So maybe this is a seed being planted for the fall. Cause remember this 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 thing this candy is the new flu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They they keep beating it in your head. So now you think it's the new flu. And it's going to be as common as getting your flu shot for people who did that every year. Mm -hmm. I never did it, but you get people who do that every year like clockwork. Mm -hmm. They just go ahead and get the flu shot. So this is going to be the new flu shot, uh, you know what I'm saying, and things of that nature. And they plant these things ahead because fall season is when we see an increase in you know flu cases and things of that nature. Annoying. Yeah, but that's what it sounds like is going on. Yeah, this monkeypox thing. I don't know what it's about. Apparently, it doesn't. They're saying, doctor's saying it doesn't. Transmit in the air like COVID did. It's a close. Said, didn't monkeys escape a few months ago in Pennsylvania? That happened. Yes, mm. Mm. it did. That did happen. It did. Remember, we were joking about the Planet of the Apes. We yeah. did say that. Yeah. Wow, monkey together. Shit, <laughs> strong. Monkey strong. <laughs> and shit. Yeah, yeah. Good. Could happen. Because if I had some shit like that on me, I yeah, goddamn. Yeah, you can take it. You can take this arm. Yeah, just just take this arm with you. I, I can't do that. Some, somebody said the midterms would nullify this. Listen, um, I don't know what was going to happen. You're going to see so much dirt come up when these midterms happen. Yeah. Because even your man is making mistakes. George Bush. 
Oh, that was what a, the fuck was that? What a Freudian slip. That was a Freudian slip for Whoa. your ass. He said something about you know this man's unjust invasion of Iraq. I mean Ukraine. Yes. Whoa. Yes. See that truth come out, boy. We in Mercury retrograde too, so yeah, man. who knows what the communication uh, slip ups are? Yeah, yeah. He said that. Yeah, I forgot about that. He that said was that. Crazy. He said that. That Mitt was a Freudian slip and a half. Yeah, admitting to war crimes. Admitting to war crimes. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, like I said, when these midterms come out, when these midterms happen, you're gonna see some because. They are trying to position, they try to position like every election as like the most important election ever. Yeah, but man, they remix it sort of like Apple, yeah, with every new phone that comes right. Out. Like yeah, the phone, yeah. the, the cameras, yeah, right here now, now it's going here. Yeah, you must have spin it to John. Yeah, yes, this is the greatest. Yeah, yeah, they do it. So, um, and I think this is the but this will be the first time I think. Public perception of one party is completely like flipped. Like this is the first time I think, just normal people just seeing the Democrats. Like, nah, I'm not. I mean, how long do you have to? And, and again, not only so caping for Republicans, but how long you gotta see that this just it's just not working. This, if you pay attention, the whole system is collapsing. Mm -hmm. Applaud that. Yeah. That's what we really want, right? Some of you want to keep it the same, and you just want. Your job and, and no, but those who understand chaos and order and, and, and new order out of chaos, they're trying to control the narrative of the chaos that they created. But we also have the ability to restore sovereign order. You know what I'm saying? If we just get together, I just watched this video, bro, of these Mormons. Amish. Amish. Amish, Mormons. <laughs> Same shit. <laughs> Build this farmhouse. In one day. Yeah. One day, bro. Yeah, that was crazy. They built, they got to, we can't get together to hold a spades game <laughs> without some shit going wrong. <laughs> yeah. They all worked in unison and they built a farmhouse in a day. Yeah. Some of you may have seen the video. It was just amazing to watch. And we can't get together and do nothing. Right. It's sad. It's just some sad ish. So, yeah, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we shall return. Get your questions ready. Yeah, get your questions I see some good ready. questions already, and we're going to get to those. We can get in and tackle them. All right. We'll be right Peace. back. So, you want to know what we do and how we do it. Well, we got a step-by-step -step booklet for you to get <laughs> to keep your game on track. Yes, so... We're introducing the family business course, right? Where we're teaching four different components of running an online family business. That's podcasting, YouTube, self-publishing, and t-shirt printing. Right? And we also have a bonus course. We do. We also have a bonus course teaching how to build your own membership. Yes. And how we, we were able to build our own as well. Step by step, line by line, we teach you even how to make the actual software for this for the membership. We should teach you how to do all of that stuff. Crazy. Right? And an extra bonus is I threw in I threw in the ebook to urban excellence along with the video interviews. Never before Drop seen the, the footage. Mic. Drop the mic. Never before seen the footage. And the reason why I did that is because I want to show families uh the eleven stories of people who also created their own businesses yes. as well who also overcame trials and tribulations yes. as well. And I think it's all relevant to, you know, building your family business. So that's what we want you to go get. We have a free ebook. It's absolutely free. And we have free online training, a free mini course to get you started. Yes. We recommend that you download, hit the link below, get the free ebook. Yes. Take the free training and then take that leap. And we're going to be here every step of the way. Yes. So uh, hit the link below and visit www.urbanx.nyc slash family. Or just hit the link below. Peace. Peace. I think they're both going to stay. And they're going to try again next year. Just being realistic. 
Uh, uh, like it depends team. on. Uh, it depends on the coach. Hornet, the Hornets yeah, won. I heard about Wing, the Hornets uh, won. Uh, Westbrook. Westbrook. I wouldn't be mad. At Westbrook. Minnesota has disgusted me this entire series. So <laughs> I'm, off, right I'm off that shit. Also, I'm gonna be upset that John Moran got this award. So I hope we see them in the second round. So Poole can whoop his behind. Ooh, for I seven like games it. I like it. And I around. Back. And we are back. We ain't did a real good countdown that time. We was all prepared. I was, you know. Yeah, yeah, studying. You know what I'm saying? Never stop studying. So, uh, thank you guys for, you know, for for being here still. Um, support those businesses. Or at Eli's channel. Watch, he finally got uh, 2,000 subscribers. Yep, clap that up. He got 2,000. Thanks to your guys' support. Yeah, we appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all logging in. And uh, before you go to bed, just put them on playlists. And let's build them up a little bit. They deserve to get monetized. Facts. You know what I mean? Because they got a good, clean show. You know? We can't get monetized here for nothing. Because like, Malcolm is just way off the chain. Just un raw, uncut. Just, right. He just says the wrong things. <laughs> right. All the trigger words. And, you know, it just messes business up here. <laughs> right. You know? And that's what's creating the tension here. You know? That's exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what's creating the tension. Right. You're listening to the sounds. Of Urban X. So somebody asked us a question earlier about the alien uh, summit that they had, the UFO. Yeah, they had a recent summit. Yeah. Yeah. So I have some. I got uh, ten things that they uh, reporters kind of pulled from that. Okay. Uh, hearing right. So they call them. They don't call them UFOs. They call them un, uh, unexplained aerial phenomena. phenomena. Yeah. A UFO. A F O or something. U A P. U A P. All right. I don't know why, but you know whatever. Mm -hmm. So apparently they said that uh, the reports of UAPs are now frequent and have been on the rise for uh, more than a decade. They reported like 400 in the past couple of years. Okay. Not to the U.S. alone either. It's been a bunch of other countries. Yes. Yes. Um, they uh, shared dec uh, declassified video of a reflective unidentified sphere-shaped object that zoomed past the pilot. At a Navy training range, only visible for a few short frames. Mm. Um, what else? They have a number of events defy that have defied all attempts of explanation. They added that the sightings recorded by the military included 11 near misses with a U.S. aircraft. Wow. They have found some UAPs were seen moving without propulsion. So that's just like... Like this. yeah, yeah, suspended. It's yeah. It's called uh, reverse gravity or something. I forget the name. Anti gravity uh, technology. Uh, what? The, like I said, four hundred uh, reports since last year. As a matter of fact, uh, they were unable to determine any signs of extraterrestrial uh, life due to limited evidence or or no wreckage. They're lying. I, I would assume that as well, and. They said that the U.S. military and intelligence are primarily interested in determining whether these area uh, objects can be linked to any threats against the United States. So that is one of the right one of the things going on. So yes. that's that was the first summit summit I believe they held in fifty, 50 years. years. Yes, uh, which is interesting. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I believe that they're just preparing you for what's to come, and this is. The final frontier in a, in, in a great sense because everything you think you've known about your reality can change instantly. Right there, yeah. Right yeah. there. Yeah. We're yeah. not alone or the universe is not what you think it is. I, I saw, I don't know how true this was. It, it could have been, could have just been completely fake. I saw a photo, a still photo, I think from the rover in Mars and it, it had like a doorway like mm. in, in one of the rocks. It was just like, it looked like Damn near man-made, but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah. don't know how true that was, but I did see that. But, the only know. thing is, all of these pictures come from NASA. Right. So right. Um, to, yeah. be, to even work at NASA, you have to be a high-level Mason. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Maybe even a Jesuit, because this information is guarded with such 
You know what I mean? Mm. Importance because it does change realities. You mm. got billions of people on this planet who have opted into religion or opted mm. into something man-made or, you know, yeah. and then you find out that this is, none of this shit is real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What does that do for the psyche of the people and how do you elevate from there? You know, you, you, to me, our natural progression is always being stunted by the devil and trying to keep us down with food, water, music, crime, distraction, inoculation, all of these things, in my humble opinion, even materialistic things. Somebody said it was fake. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Materialistic things to keep you earthbound so that you can escape or naturally progress and because it's all about perception. If you, and I always say this, if you think this is the latest in technology, can you imagine? Yeah, they, there's even- They have the 20 already. There's even a, this is like a, uh, are we talking about this? Like a, a, a convention, like a technological convention that they do every year. And people come back and it's like, yo, the stuff that they got coming is nuts. And that's the stuff that they're showing right, you. Right, right. Right? The stuff that they're not showing you. Because if you can perceive it, you can achieve it. Right. So everything is a reference point in how we do and understand things. Right now, with some kids right now, home, uh, working on his quads because he want to jump higher than Ja Moran. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you think he can jump? Or some kid who wants to shoot from half court? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Steph Curry, that's nothing because he now has a reference point to imagine a field goal kicker where you get to mid court. Yeah, midfield. Yeah. Midfield, yeah. and he lined that shit up. That'd be crazy. <laughs> and now, all, as a team, yeah. that's like a hack. Yeah. And all you got to do is get to the 50 yard yeah. line and call the kicker out. Yeah. But it's some kid somewhere going, I can do that. All right. So everything we do, and that's just talking about sports. Mm -hmm. Think about science. Yeah. Think about finances. Think about all the other things we do. Hip-hop. If you allow these things to naturally progress, we begin to move into another phase. And I think the final frontier is what they're going to unleash. They're trying to control that narrative yeah, imagine, as much as possible. Imagine if, imagine if forever... Your kids just believe anything you say, and they had to believe you. Right. And yeah. you just control all the information. Like, like Dad, and then you just, wait, wait, wait. Right. Right. That's true. Exactly. exactly. And then that's just the, the law. That's just reality. Yes. Them. You get what I'm saying? So, so, and so, that's what it is with NASA. And that's what it is with uh, everything. The uh, elite period. Yeah, yeah. They control the information and give you tidbits, and you have to work with those tidbits. And then every now and then, you know, we get a boost in technology. We get a boost in science. Mm -hmm. And there are supposed to be those working anonymously amongst us who, when they feel we are ready as a collective. Come on, if you was an advanced being, and I say this all the time, who can travel through dimensions, right? Dimension hop. That means you have to be billions of light years ahead of us in our understanding. And you come here and we're fighting over colors. We fighting over who's this and who's that. We killing each other over chicken sandwiches. Sandwiches? Uh, sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you got to say to yourself, we are not ready for certain things. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it, it, a nuclear fusion technology, yeah. we would kill ourselves. Yo, but so dude, is, is that because of... Just human nature, or is that because of just like the sandbox we're in? Like, like is does that is is it uh, is you know chicken or the egg? Which comes first? That's I what think I mean. it's a little bit of both in terms of the elite wanting to stay in control, harvesting information, mm. and creating all of this mischief so that they can have a little mm. bit more power than you can. Yeah. Because if it's all revealed that we all possess the same power, mm -hmm. all we need to do is meditate, do this and that. There is no such thing as hunger, homelessness. The world, the universe is an abundant place. Just imagine. Mm -hmm. I've, it's no reason for me to fight and kill you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's no reason for that. We all have everything we need. This would elevate the consciousness of this particular planet. You know what I mean? Okay. So just something to think about. Just something to think about. Let's take some more questions. Let's take more questions. Um, somebody said... 
Those UFOs are just my weed, man. Moon rock on deck. Okay. Dot. <laughs> Did you see Kyrie Evans' interview? Nah, but I, I caught snippets of it. Kyrie's a very intelligent guy. You know what I mean? And when given the opportunity to not for people not to take sound bites, because they love these sound bites, to take a sound bite and, and misconstrued the sound bite into anything you want, it creates a problem. But when given the opportunity to sit back and speak, he ain't disappoint me yet. He ain't said nothing. I go, whoa, that's a little crazy. That ain't out of his pocket. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, that's important to get the whole interview of things if you can. Okay, what happened in? I got. I don't know what happened with the Sasha Banks Naomi WWE. I got to ask Eli. I don't. I don't know what happened. I, I heard Miami is getting clapped. Right now? Yeah. Of course they are. Marcus Smart and Al Harford are back. Somebody said, any thoughts on Biggie's 50th birthday celebration this weekend? Wow. Well, they birthday is the 21st, right? Yeah, and they're commemorating <laughs> him with a uh, Metro card in New York City. Let's clap that up. What? They put this picture on the metro. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Among other things, and I'm I'm not saying that we shouldn't celebrate the wrong things, but sometimes we celebrate the wrong things. Why is Biggie a fucking hero? Because he made the Ten Crack Commandments, Dad. What the fuck did Biggie do? <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, and I know if Oba hear this shit, he gonna come and want to give me a dissertation he is. on how Biggie's the greatest ever, and I love Oba. But let's let's call it for what it is. Okay, okay, wait. This wait, nigga's wait. a fake drug dealer, a fat ass fake drug dealer. Whoa, whoa, who whoa! Who was a great storyteller? Now I'm just gonna give you the, the synopsis. He was a great storyteller as an MC okay. and narrative, but he didn't save no babies. He didn't raise and elevate the consciousness. Money, holes, and clothes is all a nigga knows. He gave these um, uh, imaginative crime stories that you can live vicariously through. And that's entertainment, I get it. But now you putting this motherfucker on Metro cards, what's next, a stamp? You know what I mean? Like, Why not? Uh, well, put me on a fucking stamp. I <laughs> today's think I've done gender. More for this, yeah, today's gender. You know I, what I mean? Um, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I feel the strangers, if no money exchanges. No, when it comes to rhyming and that storytelling shit, he was one of the best. He can literally paint movies, but where do we draw the line to say that these people were beneficial for society and uplifting, or are we just celebrating it because he's passed on and you can garner the energy <clears throat> from what he did? I don't, I don't know. That's um, all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Well, I, okay, well, hip-hop, I'll play devil's advocate. Hip-hop is a global phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Global. Well, put Public Enemy on a stamp. How about that? Okay. Okay, I wouldn't be mad. You know what I mean? Put them on, put them on a stamp. I wouldn't be mad. Put Rakim on a stamp. He never cursed in none of his albums. I wouldn't be mad, but he didn't die. Mm. Yeah, I guess mm, death plays a role. Death plays a We just talked about how death increases the value of your art. We just yeah, talked about that with the Basquiat stuff. We just talked about understood. that. Understood. And I don't want to... Listen. I'm, and somebody said celebrity worship. I get it all. Yeah, I get, I it. get it. And I'm not... I want to be clear. When it comes to his musical game... Yeah, you came off a little brash. No, I'm just letting much. you know. That was beautiful, you know, in terms of putting it in this perspective, because I'm an artist and I can put that in a vacuum and appreciate the art. But when we start transcending that into heroes and hey rules for younger people to look up to, I wouldn't even know what to tell Noble in terms of what Biggie did positive. I wouldn't know. I said, oh, he he did the Ten Crack Commandments. If you, <laughs> You want to get into that? What did he do? What was his contributions mm -hmm. to society? That's all I'm saying. And maybe I'm looking too far into it, but when you start commemorating him on things like a New York Metro card. I mean, because Lord knows uh, said something. He said, people talk about Shakespeare to this day. Hip hop is modern day poetry. So that's what I. And perhaps Shakespeare was a pedophile and among other things. Shakespeare didn't write them plays. That's what it was. Yeah, okay. okay. He stole that. Okay. He didn't write them plays. But I think a woman wrote those plays. That's just me. Okay. But um, that's what I think it is. I think it's just celebration Comrade of... Comrade said I sound like the mad rapper. Yeah, you do. Uh, I, I am not... <laughs> I'm yeah, not, you do. I'm a 54-year-old granddad now. Yeah. In retrospect, 
just trying to look at the grand no, scheme I, I of totally things. No, I totally get it. And I'm going to say totally it again it. for the people lending your minds, thinking straight lines. For oh, those who are God. taking what I'm saying <laughs> literal, that I'm saying he's a whack rapper. No. I'm saying what contributions, help me out, what contributions did he make to uplift society? And when you speak about art, art is supposed to do that. And when I go through his catalog, I hear nothing but negativity in his catalog. It's all I'm saying. So if your art is to elevate the people, show me where in his catalog spoke of anything progressive. That's all I'm saying. Is it to elevate or to entertain? Uh, no, art is subjective, but art, art is a part of the culture. Right. So it is a reflection of the culture, right. but the culture is also a reflection of the art. So when you leave something here that we are going to celebrate 10, 20, 30 years later, I need to have a reference point on what it did to uplift society. It's told, he told New York stories. Okay. If you put that in the time capsule, if 50 years, 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now, somebody, we know what his environment was like because he was able to paint those pictures. Okay. I'll accept that. No? No, no. I will accept all right. that it's, and during his time, it was money, holes, and clothes. That's all a nigga knows. And that's all a nigga knows. <laughs> I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. <sighs> Let's take some more questions. Let's take some more questions. That was a good one. Um, oh, he wrote Sky's the Limit. It wrote great. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I kick flows for you. Yeah, he wrote Sky's the Limit. Kick down doors for you. Yeah. No, Lord knows, I get what you're saying. As an artist, and usually in reflection of that, 10, 20, 30 years down the line, all we remember is that the artists, but the artists have a backstory. Biggie just died not 25 years ago, so I know the whole story, and I'm just being able to pass that down to the next generation. I'm about telling the whole story. And ain't none of us perfect, so I'm not sitting here saying he should be put on a pedestal or not. I'm just simply saying Somebody said Biggie told me to sprinkle coke on the floor and make a drug related. Yeah. Motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact, fact, fact. Uh, I don't. I didn't hear about the little girl that got killed in the Bronx. Yeah, eleven year old girl, man. Another stray bullet. Stray bullet. Ah, oh, man. <sighs> that came through and um, you know what I mean. My fourth album. <laughs> That's funny. Y'all yeah. Crazy. You on my fourth album, yo. Nobody even know who I am. You know what I'm saying? I just put out a hot song called Die Woke. You know what I'm saying? Nobody really listened to my song. Fuck Biggie, man. Fuck everybody, man. Yeah. Fuck it. Why, why should he be on a goddamn yeah. electric car? I should be on at least a step. At least at least a step. You know what I'm saying? For all the shit I did. You know what I'm saying? Fuck Biggie. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's dope. I like. Must say he got killed by a fourteen year old. She got killed by a fourteen year old boy. Oh, oh, did they catch the killer? Damn, man. Okay, okay. That's sad. That is sad. Um, what else? What else, guys? How y'all feel about Young Thug and Lucci? Somebody said uh, Lucci kind of like dry snitched. Oh, I'm Young not Thug. familiar. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I know that he, uh, Young Thug said he was living in inhumane conditions, and then they released a picture of his cell, and they were just like, his cell's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens when you do crime, nigga. It's a cell with your bed and a toilet. Yeah. yeah. You get used to that. That's what crime, you know. Somebody said you sound like Roland Martin. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, I didn't see the Cat Williams special. It's out. I got to check it. Cat Williams got a new special out? Yeah, on is Netflix, it, I think. Is it through uh, Dave Chappelle? I don't know. Because I know Dave Chappelle is supposed to be releasing four. He did Hurricane. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll watch the- Earthquake, you mean. Earthquake. I said Hurricane. <laughs> Damn, Hurricane. I'm just <laughs> fucking up. Ronnie James Prande is the daughter of the owner of Viacom. Wow. Oh, that's a business move. Right. <laughs> Respect it. Respect it. Business move. Uh. That business. <laughs> Nigga, that's business. <laughs> That's business, man. Yeah. Um, like, we spoke about the monkeypox thing. Um, we did. Nothing to really said. They said that it's not spread through the air, it's spread through close human contact. So I don't know if it's going to cause as much fear, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because saying something was just passed through the air. And I'm just like, talking about, talking about. So in your house, where's air in your house? Yeah. It's safe. Sure. 
You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Um, what do you think about... Did you hear about the uh, correction officers uh, making fun of the uh, Buffalo heard, shooting? I heard. They should all get fired. Mm-hmm. You being a corrections officer, yeah. understanding what your position is, and y'all think y'all in these private chat rooms, mm-hmm. and a lot of those correction officers are white supremacists. Yeah. This guy is going to be treated as a hero. He's a martyr now. Yeah. This little white boy, when he get through the system because he's done his job, yeah. he's taken four, uh, you know, 12 or 10 black people off the planet. Yeah. You study your 5% lesson, you're supposed to take four devils off the planet oh. while you're here. Yeah. Not in the literal sense, yeah. but back then it could have been. <laughs> in the literal sense, it's supposed to be you, your job is to clean all of this up. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, we'll talk. Um, If you don't got no more questions, man. The Crown video is based on the movie The Last Black Man in San Francisco. There is a new crew. Oh, the 911 operator who hung up. The 911 operator, disgusting. Yeah. Because girlfriend was whispering because she couldn't talk loud because the killer is in her midst. Yeah. You ask her why is she whispering and you hang up on her, you should get fired. I think they suspended her. You need to get Fired. Yeah. As a 911 operator, you are supposed to be able to pick up nuances. Yeah. Somebody could call for a pizza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can you, um, I want to deliver, and you're supposed to go, I know she knows this is 911. Where would you like that pizza delivered? And just boom, boom, because boom. I, so I, I was thinking about that. A, like, should, yeah. like, should 911 have an app or something? But who knows? Like, they probably get flooded with stupidity yeah, all the time. Yeah, so but I don't, I don't know how <clears> that would work. I've heard many stories of these 911 yeah. operators who just, they knew yeah. something was off or something was wrong and they followed their intuition to say, yeah. let me do something here. So she's whispering and you hang up, I think you should get fired. Yeah. Uh, the disinformation board definitely got uh, canceled, which is good. Oh, okay. And it's because oh, they canceled that. Yeah, because people, okay. the, the, the woman who was supposed to run it, they were just finding out like yeah, how she was. She, she was, was. She was crazy. One, she was crazy. She was super biased. So like, yes. how how are we supposed to trust that? And what kind of vetting system are they using, bro? That they even elected her to get through this, bro. You know, yeah. how's the new uh, press secretary doing? Oh, uh, she's not really. They they getting out like, which is kind of. Which is kind of foul because she looks like a like a fish out of water. Yeah, like you got thrown into like a terrible situation with having to defend Biden and what he has going on. But they they usually train you in advance for that. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did the best you could. But like now you in it. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. You are in it now. So and now, now they throw them real crazy questions at you. Yeah. Now and you got to be thinking sharp on your feet. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to lie very sharply. Now gas is up. Baby, yes. sh- baby form of shortage, shortage and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Like food, you know what I'm saying? So now we have to see that. I saw somebody post that the market is not crashing. It is being corrected because a lot of what was happening was overvalued anyway. So I think every so often the market just kind of corrects itself. And I noticed they, they're calling in a lot of people's credit cards, people who have good credit. Mm. And to me, that's a sign that they're trying to Restart a system. Mm. Like you might have eight credit cards and they be like, we call on all that. But I ain't never missed a payment. Ah, you mm. look like you get ready to miss a payment. Because uh. I've had people say that. So I think they they when they roll out the new, mm-hmm. it might be Bitcoin related. I'm just on a wing right now, but I think all of this stuff is related. It's a reset going on. Well, was apparently New York is out of money. A lot mm. of people weren't able to get their tax returns, their state tax returns back in New York. They all they got well, a lot of people got some bogus thing like, oh, you feel something out wrong. It was like gotcha. I ain't feel nothing out. Like I do the same thing every year. I do this every year. And they trying to get people, they they trying to like stall people uh but before they give their money back because New York is out of money. So interesting. Interesting stuff. I heard that I heard that from a, a few people, as a matter of fact. Somebody said literally just happened to my credit card, got closed and I never missed the bill. Yeah, so be prepared. Uh, for something different being rolled out, they calling in all their, their debt, whatever the case may be. Malcolm, why can't you see the sun from out of space? Yeah, Malcolm, how come you can't see the sun from out of space? Because it's a black vacuum of darkness, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and answer that crazy I don't shit. Know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, man. 
All right, they're trying to make us suffer. They can't make us suffer. You can't make black people suffer. Shit, we born with a built-in anti-suffer mode. So what y'all think is suffering, we just partying and having a good time. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. That's the way it is. You heard? You heard? Uh, with that being said, guys. With that being said. With that being said, we love y'all. We do. We appreciate y'all. We'll be we no after show tonight. We got we gave y'all one on Monday. We gave Monday. you one on Monday. We gave y'all and we tired. We got he gotta be up early. I got I got a baby to go home to. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. got stuff to do. Facts. And we appreciate y'all. But we will see you guys on Monday. Uh on time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh with that being said, peace. Peace.